Greetings, party enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma. This is Teagall 3D. And today's episode, we're going to resume a print that was stopped over a week ago. So backstory, at that Maker Fair near the end of the day, I had a print that was um, been printing throughout the day for display purposes. And the fair was ending. I needed to shut that print off. So I stopped that print. Uh, we unplugged and packed up the machine. We put it in the trunk of my car. We headed home. Uh, we went through a Burger King drive through because I kind of have a thing for chicken fries. We came home, we unpacked the printer, set it out on my desk. Um, it's been sitting here for about a week because I also had a birthday and a little mini vacation in between. And now I'm ready to go ahead and start printing again. And I want to start printing where I left off. It's important to home your axes so the nozzle has its bearings and knows where it is uh, in the build space and where, where it needs to go. I pulled up my model back up in Simplify 3D and it's you know in the middle of my build plate. I do want to rehome my axes. So I'm going to go ahead and use my job controls. The nozzle is right above my object right now. If it went to home the axis, it's going to hit it. It's going to um, probably trigger the safety feature and drop the bed again. So I'm going to move it off of it. Oops. Okay. And we will go ahead and do our home Z. And in the Maker Gear M2, it's actually a bolt over here that does the axis honey. Okay, next I'm gonna go ahead and home my X axis. I no, let's do the Y first. No, home the X axis. Okay, I'm gonna home the Y axis. In this case, my print was actually not very high. So I was just able to move my bed down a little bit uh, so I had a safe place for my nozzle to hone the axis and get its bearings. If I have a print that's tall and I have no way to manipulate the bed uh, for that nozzle to um, get honed, uh, or you know, sometimes I can have the nozzle, nozzle off the print, but the print itself is going to hit the, the beam um, that holds the XXS rail. Um, in those cases, I have that removable glass bed and I've just taken the bed off, honed all my axes, and put the bed back in. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of discrepancy on the X and Y, so you can see a little bit of lines, but luckily I've gotten away with it. It's not too noticeable um, with my glass bed plate. I stopped the print, so I had it in my control to note where the print was. When you print through the USB cable with Simplify 3D, it keeps a little running tally of where the nozzle is on the upper right hand corner of the machine control panel. And so I made sure to note exactly where the Z axis was uh, before I shut it down. I took a little screenshot and saved it so I'd remember where it was. I've resumed prints before that I didn't know where it stopped. Maybe the power went off. I had uh, one day a really a uh, bad electricity shock, static electricity shock that actually like shut my machine off. Um, there's been times where filament gets tangled, but you know, I'm elsewhere with the kids and I come back up and I look and the printer has been printing uh, nothing for an indeterminate amount of time. Now in the event that I didn't note where my print stopped, I would have to figure it out. And the way I would do that is I would sometimes take a caliber to get a best guess of where um, this height is. It's obviously not the most accurate, um, but I would move my nozzle way above it, and then I would try to position the nozzle close to my object or the height of my object. And then I would just start moving down in various increments. Um, so that was 10. 
And if I think I'm really close, I will try to find a inconspicuous spot on my model and try to get it on top of it just to make sure it's touching but not ramming into it. And sometimes touch is easier than sight and I can barely set a business card under there. I'm going to go with the uh, number that I actually wrote down, uh, which, you know, I took a screenshot. It was 4.85, and that looks to be accurate, even after all this time. So next, what I'm going to go ahead and do, I have my model here. I'm going to take my first process. Whoops. Show advance. Um, I'm going to go under my advanced tab, and I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to start at that 4.85 height where I left off there. Now, there's something else I need to do. I manually homed all my axes, so I want to take that out of the startup procedure because I don't want to do that again. So let's go ahead and take this line out, this G28 home all axes line. All right. Um, let's see here. So it's going to go to the Y50 and Z03 to move over, and it's going to try to cross over, and it's going to hit my object, I'm pretty sure. So let's go ahead and change this. Let's go uh, G1, Z10. We're going to do the 10 first. Extruder, first the nozzle, and then no, we're not going to. Oh, all right, we can handle that slow light. The slow light is right here because it's not nowhere near my object. So then we're going to do. We're just going to go up to the Z10 again, and lift. And at that point, absolute mode should kick in, and it should put the nozzle the right place that it needs to be. Okay, let's see if we can restart our print. Okay, you can see that it's starting there. Uh, don't be alarmed. This is one of my fancy prints that I'm embedding parts in, so it's, it's expected that it's not going to be very much. Okay, fingers crossed. Let's give it a go. I'm doing my little extrusion over here. So lift up. And here we go. And then what I do is I watch that first layer because it's the same kind of issues. If you're too high, you'll see that layer not sticking. If you're too uh, low, you'll see, just like a first layer, you'll see the filament not coming out uh, because there's not enough room between the nozzle and the print for it to come out. So here we go. This is the print. Uh, I'll get some close-up footage here, but yeah, you can't even tell where it got restarted. Um, so big success. And I should say your mileage with this technique could very well vary. Very well vary. Um, I'm using a Maker Gear M2, which does home its accesses based on a bolt on the side of it. So it gives me those little options, that little hackability there. I'm also using Simplify 3D, which allows me to pick my starting points of when I want to start a print. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope this gives you ideas on how you could salvage prints on your side with your printer and your slicer. Um, if you have any questions or any kind of additional processes or additional techniques, go ahead and reach out to me. I'm at TGAW on Twitter. You can comment down below here on YouTube and I'll have an accompanying blog post and you can comment there as well. Thank you guys and have a great day.